What is going on, guys? Today's podcast is going to be about the global reset, the next 10 years. You will own nothing, but will you be happy? That's the question. So let me get into a little housekeeping. If you notice, I'm, I'm better. I'm not as sick as I was. I am better, but I haven't been producing a lot of videos, and I'm going to tell you why. One of the things that I am doing is selling these damn cars because I had to focus because essentially because I haven't been focused on them, all of the batteries died. So I've sold five cars this week and I'm shooting to sell seven, just sell them all and get them away. So until I get these cars sold, the content production is going to be a little wonky. It's going to be a little wonky because. The car business is one of the worst decisions I ever made in my life. And it's hard as hell to get out of. So that's what's going on. So I'm focusing on getting rid of these cars and so I can get back. So hopefully we will be back on track in June. All right. So let's talk about the global reset. The next 10 years, you will own nothing, but will you be happy? I've been doing some thinking and some calculations I believe that in the next 10 years, home ownership is going to drop drastically. You want to know why? Because the average person cannot afford a home right now. And this is something else, too. I do believe we're going to have a recession. I do believe that we're going to, you know, the global reset is going to be on and popping. But I don't think housing prices are going to crash. I don't think that's going to happen because there are too there's too much money out here. If individual investors can't buy these properties, corporations will buy these properties. And what you will see are complete and whole neighborhoods of rental properties. Like you will see a whole subdivision that will be nothing but a rental neighborhood. That is coming. That's going to be the future because the average person is kind of like New York City. The average person has been priced out of the housing market. you got people in New York who've been renting their whole lives. This is going to spread across the country in the next 10 years. People will not be able to own anything. They will not be able to own a house. They will not be able to own a business. They will not be able to own their lives. So I expect, you know, if you are someone with some money and you can amass 10 rental properties, I feel the future is going to be good for you because we're getting to a position where the average person just can't afford a house. And something else that is happening with the increase in residential housing prices Property taxes are exploding. So now you have people who own houses that they can no longer afford to live in. Mark my words, next 10 years, we're going to be a rental nation. We're going to be. It's going to be ugly. You're going to have people who will never be able to afford a home in their whole lives. That's what's coming. That's what's coming. And that ain't. The worst of it. It's not the worst of it. Automation is about to go bananas. So many people are going to lose jobs because of automation. And this is why, because one of the things I do is I watch Nugs and More Finance. These guys do DoorDash. That's what's going to be left for the average person who hasn't prepared themselves for anything greater. DoorDash, Uber, Instacart, gig economy jobs. This is what's going to be available for the person with minimum education, and they're going to have to trade a lot of time for minimum dollars. This is, this is the track we're seeing because one of the things that I saw you're going to see massive automation in the next 10 years. You're going to see. Potentially.
potentially home based robots to do cleaning. What this is going to do is dramatically alter the workforce. If you are a specialized knowledge worker, a computer programmer, a developer, a designer, someone that has to have a lot of skills, you will be OK. But if you're a person with no skills or no desire to become an owner, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. What's going to happen? You're going to have a separate class. You're going to have normal people and then you're going to have the exceptional and then you're going to have the trillionaire class. We're going to have trillionaires in the future. We're going to have people with so much money that they will be able to buy and fund their own armies, their own infrastructure Buy. you will have people who have the ability to completely buy a town. See, the global reset for the next 10 years is going to tear the world apart. So you got a choice. You can start developing yourself, learning new skills, developing a business, because this is what's going to happen. Either you're going to be part of the ownership class, which is going to be really, really small compared and contrast against the whole population base. Or you will be part of that population base with no skills, no education, and you will be doing DoorDash, Uber, Instacart. Because I watch these videos and they get a lot of views because a lot of people are doing these gig economy jobs because these people have failed to prepare themselves for the future. They didn't go to school. They didn't... Um, take math they didn't take the hard courses they took a lot of easy courses and it's very very bad it's very very bad what's going to happen i talked about this earlier the global reset you have someone who currently owns a house in the future this person will be renting a property they'd be renting in an apartment or they will be renting a house. And this is some I saw with the car rental business. Now, I'm not going to ever get back in the car rental business, but in the future, you're going to have a lot of people renting cars because they cannot afford to buy a car. See, if you can position yourself in the ownership class, then you can rent out cars, houses, tools, Guns, cameras, computers, washer and dryers. Yes, we're going to have a nation. We're going to have what I like to call a payment based nation. People, this this is one of the mistakes I made with the car rental business. I got in a business that I would never use. That was one of my fundamental flaws. And I kind of thought about that. I would never, ever rent a car because it's too expensive. And see, this is one of the things that's going to happen. Years and years ago, I used to use Aaron's rent to own. I rented a washer and dryer. I rented a TV because I was too broke to pay cash for one. Here's the rub. Being part of the rental economy, you're going to pay way more than if you put yourself in the position to be an owner. And a lot of people are going to make sick money off the rental economy. Sick money. I'm talking, you're going to have people who are going to become billionaires because they're renting stuff to people. Go on Google and see what you can rent. You can rent cameras. Now, this is where it's going to get really crazy. In the future, you're going to be able to rent a husband. And you're going to be able to rent a wife. I'm not joking. People are already on sale. That's going to intensify. So if you are positioning yourself in the ownership class where you have money, you have liquidity, you have credit. 
you're going to be able to do so much more in the future because what's happening is we have so many people who are unable to compete right now. Each day, each year, those people drop off. They're not going to be able to compete. They're not going to have any money. There, there's this one YouTube channel. I'm not going to mention any names. But the proclamation is my goal is to become a billionaire and help a thousand people become millionaires. And I watched this guy and his intent is noble. But here's the problem. This dude cannot manage money. Which is one of the core fundamental rules to getting rich. You must be able to manage the money that you currently have before you get more money. Or you will be on this cycle. There are people who are making 200, 300, 400, 500 thousand dollars a year. And they're living paycheck to paycheck because they have no financial discipline. None. They're just blowing money like big meat. So what's coming? You're going to have distinct new classes of people. Now, the ownership class, the trillionaire class. Now, let's be honest. There's not going to be that many trillionaires. We're talking about maybe 10 to 50 people or families are going to be trillionaires. But it's coming. It's coming. And then we're going to have the trillionaire class. Then we're going to have the billionaire class. Then we're going to have the millionaire class. This is going to be the subsets of the ownership class. I'm about to give you a playbook. If right now in the next 10 years, you can acquire 10 rental properties or, you know, I'm not going to do it. If you can acquire 50 to 100 cars or you can acquire 100 computers, or if you could require something that you can purchase and rent to people, you're going to position yourself. Because see, these, these people, they're not looking at the overall cost of ownership. They're looking at it from a payment situation. If I can make the payment, I'm going to do this. So what if I pay three or four times more than what I would pay if I bought it myself? This is the future. This is what's coming. This is what's coming. So you have a choice. Once again, most of us are not going to make the trillionaire class. Most of us are not going to make the billionaire class. But many people will ascend to the millionaire class. And there will be many people who will ascend to the almost millionaire class. These will be people who will be making two to eight hundred thousand dollars a year and they will be part of the ownership class at its basic level. And these people will have good, good, good lives because they will have money to become owners. So if you're not working on becoming part of the ownership class right now, if you're not stacking your chips, if you don't have any plans to become an owner, the future is going to be bleak for you unless you're a highly skilled professional a computer programmer, cybersecurity, uh, engineers, like my, uh, my girlfriend who's in school, she's STEM. She's being recruited by the FBI. She's being recruited by um, the cybersecurity company. So once she graduates, she's going to have a six-figure job. Six-figure job. And those people who do that, and that's going to be below the ownership class. These will be the highly skilled, developed professionals. And they will be able to participate in this new economy. They will be able to buy homes. They will be able to take vacations. They will be able to save money. They will be able to become asset-based millionaires through investments. But what about the 80% of America that only makes $35,000 a year. It's going to be very, very bad. It's going to be the next 10 years are going to show you some stuff. The next 10 years are going to be critical for where you want to position your family to be successful. 
You're going to have to work really hard. You're going to have to make sacrifices. But more importantly, you need a plan. You cannot be out here winging it. Like one of the things I'm getting ready to do since uh, I'm kind of taking a break from YouTube to some degree, like um, the car rental business is so depressing that I'm just not in the state of mind to produce videos after dealing with the cars. Like the other day I had to have batteries installed on all these cars because they died because they've been sitting so long. So I just made the decision. I'm going to focus on getting rid of these cars and I'm going to focus on revamping Mac Daddy Media. Now, what does that mean? New content, better content. Because, you know, one of the things that happened, and then I'll be honest, is I just kind of slid. You know, my, my content ain't popping right now. It's just not popping because I'm not in the state of mind to make popping content. Today was a better day. I'm running a lot of experiments. I'm doing some stuff. I had a really good night and it put me in a frame of mind to produce this video. But I'm telling you, there are many, many days I'm dealing with these cars, dealing with these issues. Like tomorrow is a car day. I got to have more batteries installed. Um, two cars that I think have sold are going to be picked up. And then I got someone else coming to look at one. You know, I just get rid of these cars and then start off June on a clean slate without that over my head because this is one of the things about me and this is one of the things about you it is hard to do multiple things well at the same time like i said i sat down i focused i rewrote ads and i started selling cars so i'm going to concentrate on that i cannot say how many videos i'm going to produce across the network this month um just depends on how i feel just depends on my mental state because I'm not going to make a video when I'm in a bad mood. I'm not. And, you know, like I said, I can take ownership that my content is not popping now because I'm not in the proper frame of mind. So I would rather do nothing than to put up crappy content over and over again. And that's that was a trap that I kind of fell into because I got sick I started reposting older videos. Some of the older videos really did well. But what I want to do is get the channel to the point where I can produce one to two videos a week and they they flow. They they do what they need to do. They take off and people want to watch them. So that's where I'm at. That's what's going to happen. That's what's going to, because I want to make popping content. I want to start a podcast. And because I'm dealing with these damn cars, it's taking part of my creative mental bandwidth. Because once again, I know how to resell stuff. And like I said, I wrote an ad and got rid of a car that I was having problems with. And I rewrote the ad and, the, and I sold it two days later. So I got to rewrite ads. I got to retake the pictures because one of the big issues is everyone thinks that you're trying to get over on them, selling them a car. I'm like, everyone was like, hey, can I check out the title to see if it's not a salvage title? And, you know, I'm dealing with a lot and it's quite stressful. So go ahead, get that taken care of. And hopefully June start off. And get back to where I was because, like I said, I got sick dealing with these damn cars and, you know, just not in the proper frame of mind to produce content. Just um, I'm I should say I am glad that I'm in this position. I can afford to take a break. I could afford to take the rest of the year off if I wanted to, which I actually have thought about, you know. Because one of the things I learned when I had the heart attack is I didn't produce content for months and that the channel didn't completely die. Once I started producing content, people started watching again. So I'm not like worried about that. Uh, I want to produce a higher caliber of content. I want to bring back the editors. I want to do some stuff because I got some ideals because, you know, I'm always thinking, 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 thinking. But yeah, so that's what's going on. And go ahead, let me know what you think, your thoughts and opinions in the comments. 
and I will see you guys in the next one.